Welcome to the Henry Ford's Innovation Nation. I'm Mo Rocca. Prepare to be mesmerized. Coming up, hitting the road for the ultimate power trip. Process of putting a plethora of parts in place. The cell signals changing your channels. And flying robots freaking out the flock. Next on the Henry Ford's Innovation Nation. Rarely are great game-changing inventions met with instant cheers. Usually there's first the chin rub, followed by the head scratch. I'm guessing that when the Wright brothers announced that they could fly, they were met with a bunch of, and then comes the head bonk. Of course you can fly. When we heard that a husband and wife team had invented solar roads, it was head bonks from the start. Here's Adam Yamaguchi. Our sun is a huge ball of massive energy. And using solar panels, we can harness this power into electricity for residential, commercial, and industrial uses. Usually, solar panels are installed on rooftops in places where they are exposed to a lot of direct sunlight. But what if, aside from rooftops, we used other open spaces for solar panels? Areas such as parking lots and roads. Imagine the huge potential for generating more energy. Lucky for us, there's people already working on it. I drove on a regular asphalt highway to Sandpoint, Idaho to meet Scott and Julie Brassaw, the creators of a company called Solar Roadways, to find out how they're working to turn parking lots and streets into power generating boulevards crisscrossing the country. How on earth did you guys come up with the idea for Solar Roadways? Well, we met when we were three and four years old and uh, Julie's mom used to babysit me and my favorite toy back then was a slot car track, a little electric road with electric cars. And my brainstorm as a little guy was if we could make real roads electric, then kids could drive. That childhood inspiration eventually led to Scott and Julie's innovation, six-sided solar panels that could replace asphalt road surfaces. The panels got the attention of the U.S. Department of Transportation, who awarded them two contracts to try and develop solar road panels that were safe for fast-moving vehicles super strong to survive the weight of constant traffic and able to generate power. So this is the solar road panel. This is one of 108. So this is the thing that you're hoping to pave all of exactly. America with one of these. Exactly. Things. Sidewalks, driveways, parking lots, airports, roads. Can you walk me through a little bit of the technology that's sure. inside here? This is tempered glass, so it's really, really strong. It's half inch thick, it's textured on top. We had traction tested so it can stop a vehicle going 80 miles an hour on a wet surface. And Scott's not kidding. I did everything I could to put a dent in the solar panel, but only gave myself sore feet. The green part here is a circuit board. So we've got the solar cells, the circuit board. On the circuit board are the LEDs for making road lines and graphics, whatever we need. That's right. The solar road panels also contain LED lights that can light up in various configurations. We can make any road line configurations, parking lot configurations. We can write verbiage. We can do graphics. On the underside of the circuit board are heating elements. So we heat up the surface so it doesn't allow snow and ice to accumulate. These panels actually talk to each other, so each hexagon has six neighbors and there's a microprocessor in each one. That means the solar panels are connected like computers. So if one goes bad, the other panels can report it. And the faulty panel can be easily replaced without expensive resurfacing or road closures. Other potential benefits include powering fiber optic cable lines and Wi-Fi hotspots through a cable corridor just below the road's shoulder. This corridor could also collect and recycle runoff from rain or snow coming off the solar panel surface areas. Covering roads with solar panels could help rebuild our nation's crumbling infrastructure, create jobs, and provide a charging network for electric cars. Scott and Julie raised over $2 million from a crowdfunding campaign to buy a building and hire employees to start manufacturing the solar panels. They are preparing to build five solar panel test projects around Sandpoint, including ones at the airport parking lot and tarmac. All right, so I think we're gonna need about uh, two million more. <laughs> we'll get started. <laughs> Scott and Julie have a lot more testing to do before solar roadways becomes a reality. But Scott believes there's real potential to do something big with the 28,000 square miles of paved surfaces in America. And he dreams of the day when solar roadways could become our national power grid. We did some calculations early on. If we were to cover that with these panels, using just 15% efficient solar cells, we could produce three times more power than we use as a nation. That's great news. But what's even better news? The sun will always be there patiently waiting for the solar roadways. 
Coming up, assembling the model of efficiency, the satellite truck in a sack on a back, and clearing the skies with a robot surprise. But first, it's time for the Mo You Know. In 1908, the tea bag was invented by mistake. How did it accidentally become a steeping success? Was it A, poor instructions, B, a tissue mishap with the Earl of Grey, or C, a strainer shortage? You percolate over the answer. Oh, wait, that's coffee. Oh, you filter the choices. Ugh, puns are hard. Just stay tuned. We'll tell you when we get back. Please don't leaf. Eh? Welcome back. Seems like you were gone for too long. Before the break, we asked how the tea bag was invented by mistake. If you said A, poor instructions, you are correct. In 1908, New York tea importer Thomas Sullivan sent loose tea to his clients in small silk bags. Without any directions, some of those tea lovers didn't know that they were supposed to take the tea out of the bag before putting it into hot water. Or you know it, the tea bag was hanging by a string all over the world. And that's the Mo You Know. There are a few things I know for sure. For instance, you are watching this show right now. I look terrific in a suit. And I know for certain that I would not be standing here at the Henry Ford if not for the Model T. You see, the Model T was the game changer of the car world. And the way it was put together changed the game for the manufacturing world too. The Model T was the first motorized vehicle an average family could afford to own. Introduced in 1908 by Henry Ford's Ford Motor Company, Americans lined up to buy it. At first, it was a challenge to meet demand for the car and still keep prices low. The Henry Ford's chief curator, Mark Gruther, showed me how the Model T was initially built by hand, which was typical at the time, and slow. So how did they build it? Initially, they sort of bring all the parts together, numerous workers, it coalesces into a vehicle in place. So it's like a team of people yep. all working on one car. Absolutely. They're trying to find ways of building these cars more quickly and more efficiently and more cheaply so you can drive the cost down. Right, because I'm thinking a group of people getting together to build a car doesn't sound that efficient. No, it doesn't. There's a lot of choreography involved. Like, I'd, I'd be running over and grabbing a wheel. wheel. Right. Putting that on. Putting on here. Um, and maybe you're doing the muffler too. And then a muffler. But the, not that wheel, because that's my wheel. Is this a muffler? That, that, yeah, well, exactly. Well, I hand you the muffler maybe. Would you yeah, be? but that's not my job, you see. I, I've oh. got other wheels to do. Okay, all right. Henry Ford needed to find a better way to build the Model T. After much time, trial and error, the secret to the Model T success was Henry Ford's implementation and near perfection of the assembly line a process of mass production where a product such as a car is built systematically one section at a time as it mechanically moves from one specialized worker to another with new parts being attached until the car is finally completed. Building Model T's using the assembly line process meant Ford had to hire thousands of people, a worker for each part on the line, and there are a lot of parts to a Model T. Assembly